to your face. I'm just going <laughs> to... Ready? Yep. All right. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Gospel Tech Podcast. My name is Nathan Sutherland, and this podcast is dedicated to helping families love God and use tech. I thought we weren't to... doing a podcast episode. Uh, I don't know. Actually, you're right. It was just auto. Like, I hit record, and then I did it. Anna's here, by the way. Hi, Anna. Hi. <laughs> it's the long-awaited uh, return of Anna. We are talking today about building hedges. So, uh, and specifically, we're going to go into like the brass tacks. Anna had the awesome idea of like, hey, let's actually show like some tutorial pieces. So I've talked about hedges before. The basic overview is we are putting distance between ourselves and harmful things on the internet. Uh, it's We want to hedge around our devices, hedge around our network, hedge around our family. There's specific episodes about that go to the start here series back in january 2024 you can hear more about it or the workshop or anywhere else but uh today we're looking at covenant eyes specifically yes. and covenant eyes is one we put on a device so we're actually going to install it on anna's phone uh and then hopefully i can figure out how to record that so if you don't see like anna's specific phone like him blown up it's because i couldn't figure it out but the uh, idea is we're going to install it and then just have the conversation of why this specific hedge um, am I forgetting anything on that? And it, oh, why it's biblical. Uh, this is very loving for two th reasons. One, we're given a standard for what we should do with our minds and our hearts, which is set them on the things of the spirit and not on the things of the flesh. Uh, that'd be a Romans 8, 4, and 5. Uh, we are also told that we're never actually the only ones seeing what goes on online. Uh, Jesus tells us that it's not just about um, murdering someone is about the anger in our heart where we dismiss them as someone made in the likeness of God. We're told that it's not just about seeing naked people. It's actually about lusting, choosing to take someone's image for our own gratification, that these are the things that are actually what Jesus cares about. And therefore, our devices, which are often avenues for our anger and for our lust and for our other uh, fruit of the flesh, kind of Galatians 5.19 stuff, uh, we want accountability on there so that we can have other people who love us bring us into the fold again when we step out and that we're not having to self-report everything. And that's good for our kids. It's also good for us as adults. So uh, where do you want to start on that? Well, I guess let's start with what is covenant eyes. Oh, yeah. We should do that. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm here to just be the regular person because you're up here in the big ideas. And I... It's a nice way to say that. Yeah. I'm down here with the regulars <laughs> what she's saying is she's grounded and practical no and i'm just not a big theory, theory person i want to know how it's happening in my life so yeah, what is covenant yeah. eyes and why right. like maybe talk about how like we have covenant eyes on your phone yes we do. is it on anything else this one it's on each of our home computers okay and then why does it need to be on my phone and if we had other we don't have any other devices we don't have tablets or anything. we don't have any tablets we don't have like it, it can't be installed by the way on smart tvs and like gaming consoles oh, okay uh, well maybe back up and stuff. first tell us what is yeah covenant so covenant eyes. eyes is accountability software and it's specifically built uh for uh, filtering and or um what would you call it catching <laughs> there's a better word for that but pornography uh and so it has a really neat AI program that scans everything that comes across your phone. It works best on Android devices, uh, but if you have a phone like mine that's basically just a dumb phone, it works fine. The The catch with Covenant Eyes is it's going to see an image, it'll take a snapshot, and it'll send it to your allies. You could have one, you could have 10. The idea is one or two. People who care about you that you know are going to see whatever's on your phone. Uh, and that's awesome because, especially on Android devices, uh, so for like if you have a young person who needs a smartphone and you want Covenant Eyes on it, Android, it'll see text messages, it'll see the movies they watch, the games they play, uh, the web searches, the apps they use, all that stuff will be under the purview of Covenant Eyes. And the point of Covenant Eyes is not, aha, we caught you, now you're in trouble. The point is, hey, we love you, and like, what's going on here? Uh, it's not so much about what just happened, but why did that just happen? Uh, and okay, what, but tell us what actually happens. Like. It takes a screenshot, yeah. sends it to an ally, and you now have photographic evidence to have a conversation starter of, hey, I saw that at 2 a.m. yesterday, this thing happened. It'll give you a website and an image. I don't know that it sends a daily report. Does it send a daily? Only sends daily reports if anything concerning shows up. So okay. you'll, get a, you'll get a green, a yellow, or a red. Okay, so I am one of your allies, and yes. I'll get a weekly report. Yes, and that, that means things were good. Yeah, so but it just says like, Nathan's report and it shows me the color in the text of my email. Yes. And then if I click on it, it'll show me the green, yellow, red report. It'll be like a little yeah, box. Yeah, and it'll it. say like what the picture is. 
that yeah. it'll like screenshot it and show what the yep. questionable picture, which typically is like I was on. You went to Lululemon. I was on something. Lululemon <laughs> on your computer and it screenshotted that like it was me looking at sports bras or swimsuits or something. Yep. And that's. Yeah, which is awesome because then you go, oh, it's yellow, but I don't have any concern. But there might be someone where that content is concerning. Yeah. And that needs to be a conversation point like, hey, we made an agreement. We're not going to be doing this kind of shopping here or whatever. And that then becomes the accountability piece. So great. That's awesome. Okay, uh, why does it need to go on my phone if I I have not struggled with pornography? Right. This is a good not question. That could be the case. That has not been my That's not story. been your story. Yeah. So um, why does my phone need to have two reasons? Eyes? We have humans in the house. And so to build a hedge, like any gap in the hedge is a gap in the hedge. So we want to make sure all of our devices are under the exact same expectations and rules. Parental viol- uh, devices are not uh, exempt. Exempt, especially devices that are handed to kids. Uh, so that's the first. And the second is, I, as your husband, do have a history with <laughs> pornography. Uh, and I want to make sure that um, all the devices have the same level of accountability. Now, if you're someone who either doesn't understand that or totally does, and you're from kind of my more my track and story, uh, there is a point where people go, well, I'm saved, so that shouldn't be a problem anymore. Or I'm, I'm really committed to this, and uh, I don't want to have to have that be a thing because, well, frankly, it's embarrassing to do a video, talk about installing accountability software on your wife's phone. But here's the deal. Um, two things. One, we are not making a statement that this app is going to somehow keep you safe. That's not its goal. Its goal is not to fix a moral heart issue that you have. Its goal is to help you support the goals you already have for yourself. I am a new creation in Christ. I love my wife uh, and I want to be a great dad and uh, be fruitful in the ministry I'm placed in. And I know pornography is bad for that. So that's thing one. I want to hedge between that. And thing two is there is still seventh grade Nathan alive inside here somewhere. And 99.9% of the time, he's not there. Uh, He is dead and gone and new renewed Nathan is there. (laughs) And then sometimes if I'm tired enough and angry enough and anxious anxious enough and hungry enough, (laughs) I will have this literal, like this personality wakes up that I no longer feel like myself. Uh, And I love knowing that, yes, the internet exists in my home. I can go on my phone and search anything I want. There's no filters. But two people who care about me, my wife is one of them, uh, will also see that. And it leaves you with a moment of, hmm, like think about the number of mistakes in your life you wouldn't make if someone who really loved you was also in the room. So it does that. And so that's why we're going to install it on your phone as the example here. But that means every device in our home. There's no sneaky backdoors. There's no old burner phones. There's no old thing that only gets on the Wi-Fi, but it can still get on the Wi-Fi. Uh, all those things are going to be beholden to your family expectations. And with Covenant Eyes, you're given a, a multiple licenses. It can go on lots of devices. So oh, that's nice. that is, you don't, you're not rebuying it each time you install it on a different device. So works great on uh what am i saying uh personal computers mac uh consoles and then also uh samsung android i guess android so samsung and google phones on iphones there's other parental controls you'll probably need because it doesn't work great within like apps like instagram uh it can't screen swipe within instagram on an iphone because of iphone's privacy settings so yeah which is one Again, reason I, to not what, have an iPhone. Another reason not to have an iPhone. Or if you're like me, I just don't have Instagram on my phone. I use it through a browser. And then as long as you're using the browser, uh, it can do all of that. So you can use YouTube, you can use Instagram, but you have to log in through your browser rather than through an app specifically. So oh, that's kind of the workaround on that's that. That's a good note. Yeah. Okay. So how do I install it on my phone? You pick up your phone, you go to the app store and you search Covenant Eyes. Okay. Uh, this is, we already have a subscription, so we're just going to log in. But if you didn't, you would just get the app and then you would sign up. And it's about 20 bucks a month. Uh, I have had it since college. Uh, it was kind of when it first came out, way before AI was a thing. It was not nearly as robust as it is, as it is now. It needed basically to already have a list of websites. And it had to like recognize the website you went to by name, by like DNS server list. So uh, now it can actually just recognize images on anything which is pretty fantastic so anna will download that and then we'll log in and actually at this point i'm at, we're just going to flash forward because there's no reason to watch her doing this so it's really exciting go okay so it just asked me to i had to click allow vpn configuration yes and you know what all those things are and i don't think most people do know what yeah, those so things are the, i don't know what any of that is vpn is basically a private connection you, you might use them for work or if you have a work computer and you have to log into your uh work email they'll have you use a vpn uh it's a 
basically a private connection and by allowing a VPN, you are allowing them access to your phone to filter or, or to screen what comes across your screen. Do so I need to let, uh, you need to do I have to have, VPN. okay, I said allow that. Do I have to have notifications from Covenant Eyes? You don't have to allow notifications. Okay, because they'll no. still email me. They'll still email you, that would just be like, Oh, no, I do have to. It said, oops, something went wrong. Oh, uh, we caught it. Good thing we're doing this live. <laughs> fix now. You do have to have, notif- I don't like notifications. Okay, sorry. I wonder if that's good. part of allowing, uh, if that's part of Apple's uh, licensing piece though, because I have it on my phone and I don't ever get notifications hmm. from Covenant What would they Ice. even tell me about? I, that's why I wonder if it's like a, you have to do that to get certain rights okay. to be able to see certain things, like if notifications. Let's set up the Safari extension. Yes. Yeah, so this is the new thing. 2024 oh. uh, Safari. They used to have a browser that was Covenant Eyes browser. Oh, that, look. Okay. Hang on. I'm going to no screenshot is... this so you can show people. Because I this is a lot of steps, and it'll it'll walk you through. It does walk you through, but some of us are less tech. It's intimidating. That's it's new. Open settings. Oh, what do I? If enabled, screen time must be temporarily disabled. So <laughs> this is so many things. This is why I don't people don't want to do it because you yeah. already are like that's too many. It's asking me to do too much. Disable screen time settings. Screen time. Yep. So you go down to the bottom, and once you click on screen time, you go to the bottom again, and it'll say turn off, turn off. App uh, and website activity? No. Change screen time passcode. Turn off screen time passcode. Oh. Then you enter screen oh, time. What's my screen time password? Probably the same at oh. mine is. Got it. Oh, old standby. Okay, few. Few, okay. It does, by the way, getting your screen time pass code wrong too many times. It blocks you. It will block you. Okay, now where do I go? Now, okay, I have to go back to Covenant Eyes. <laughs> yep, so, so what we've just done is screen time was part of the parental safety settings. It's awesome for the device side of a hedge on an iPhone. Um, and it has now disabled it, which okay. will allow. Now I have to go back to settings, select Safari, select extensions. This is why people don't like doing this. This is why people don't like accountability. No. Well, not even, I'm fine with accountability. This is a lot of steps. I feel like accountability requires a lot of steps. I don't they know. make it really hard. Like it's annoying how hard they make Who's it. Who's they? Everyone. Like the Apple, Apple doesn't default. Yeah. Like it makes it do so many steps. Okay, I'm in the Safari. Allow. So you have to go down. Oh, extensions. Down. Yep. Covenant eyes. Allow extension. Allow in private browsing. Turn that on. Yeah. Okay. Is that all I'm supposed to do? Uh, that's, I believe, all that said to do. Covenant eyes. Allow in private. What if this is grayed out? Mine wasn't grayed out. Oh, at the bottom of Safari extension, all websites to allow. Okay. Oh, ask. Allow. Okay. All right. So now. Now it says, got an extra minute. Level up your protection with Apple's free screen time feature. Do you have Safari uninstalled on your phone? Yeah, I don't have Safari on my phone. Oh, so you only use the Covenant Eyes. It's a browser now a browser. that you're searching through. Yes. Okay. And that is the one that has the extension. So. Uh, so do I need to delete Safari off of mine? No, you just. Uh, okay. So it says, so just now you're currently in the browser of Covenant Eyes app. Uh, the browser will be removed. So what you do now is you just put oh. Covenant Eyes on your Safari, Safari browser. So actually, I need to install Safari back on my phone and do what you just did. Oh. So that's because eventually this app that's being run currently by Covenant Eyes will go away and I just won't have any internet on my phone. Uh, so oh. that will have to happen at some point. So now but my internet all has Covenant Now Eyes. everything you see through your browser, will it be? But Get if you reported go on, on your account. <laughs> my account. So if you really want to make that exciting, uh, you know how. But like all your other stuff won't. It doesn't change. Like when you go on Instagram, that won't get picked up. Sure. Yeah. When I so. bring it back for five minutes and then I delete it. <laughs> and then you delete it uh, yeah. for, for work and play. So uh, does that okay. make sense? Yeah, I think that's good. I think it'd be, hopefully we'll get some visual yeah, aids ho- and a blog I'll tutorial to i think a written and a visual 
with the screenshots you took and then with like an actual like yeah here's where to go it's not that hard you just have to follow the instructions but it's a couple clicks i love that you were like stressed out in the middle of that and yet here we are like it's done like that's it. it this phone is now accountable for our children for me for our family like there's that next layer um and as you may not have heard but it works again inside incognito mode which former student of mine lovingly calls sin cognito mode uh it doesn't get tricked by this covenant eyes is still present in that again the only layer that it can't get around is the design layer from apple specifically on an iphone do people know what incognito mode is oh private browsing so uh there's a way that it doesn't like track cookies and it doesn't keep a search history uh within your phone and it, it doesn't matter if you don't know what it does because Covenant Eye still works. So uh, if you are someone who has had problems with incognito mode personally or with children or significant others, um, Covenant Eye gets around that. So it's a great personal tool for accountability, for living biblically, and for really bringing to light the dark corners, nooks, and crannies of the internet and of our hearts. So I'm a big fan. I think it's a wonderful way to be deliberate with what we do, but it's not meant to make you good. That's Jesus's job. Uh, This is just to make you accountable. (laughs) So uh, any other questions? Nope. All right, cool. Well, uh, it was going to be a tech minute, but it was more like a tech 10 minutes. But I hope it was tech 10. Take 10 for tech 10. Oh, yeah, great. Okay. (laughs) Trademark pending. Uh, (laughs) All right. Thanks, y'all.